When people see my Faust content, I feel truly blessed. But posting it to Discord and having it lost to the ether that is that platform is very discouraging. If only there was some way, or somehow, that people could find my content and click a small button to have it delivered right to their eyeballs any time I post it to the internet. If only there was a platform that would allow me to do that and allow them to enjoy all sorts of high-level Faust content on the regular whenever I get done making it. That would be sick. Guilty Gear Strive, Developer's Backyard. It's Akira Katano. This is my Akira Katano voice, all right? Greetings to all readers of Developer's Backyard. This is Katano from the development team at Arc System Works. Thank you to everyone who took part in the Guilty Gear Strive GGST open beta test number two, held in May. We are especially grateful to everyone who took the time to fill out the survey. In this volume, we would like to address the feedback we received as the release date approaches. Well, that's nice. That's nice. That's not bad. That's not bad. I think we need more intense music for this, right? We need... What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? That's not bad. <laughs> We've had two major events since the last volume of Developer's Backyard, the Open Beta Test 2 and Red Bull Kumite. During the Red Bull Kumite, we, received, we revealed information about the player match mode and mission mode. First, we would like to provide some additional information here. All right. So this is the player room stuff. Player capacity, it looks like they have eight here, but maybe up to 16 or 12. To explain player match mode simply, it lets you create rooms to play matches where you can freely change the match regulations. You can play with only your friends by setting an ID or use them for tournaments. Up to nine players can enter each room. So you can have up to eight players in a tournament join at one time along with the organizer. All right, so that sounds pretty bog standard, right, so far. But being able to change max regulations mid, like, not having to recreate the lobby is actually like a buff from Exerd. So that's, that's not bad. We've included a variety of features, such as spectating and lining up for the next match. You can even wait for an opponent while in trading mode, something not available in prior titles. Are they trying to like, they're trying to get us excited, but this is like... <sighs> That's sort of something that should have been standard for a long time, right? From our perspective. That's just how it is, I guess. There is also an online training mode where you can practice with a friend without worrying about time limits. This opens up more options than the standard online mode. That's cool. Online training mode is actually like quite nice. All right, mission mode, little map, looks nice. Online training, no, you could, uh, you could hop into like your own little training room in the lobby, but that was it. It wasn't like you couldn't connect with another player. Looks like they have the mission mode similar to Exert, so that's good. Next, I would like to discuss Mission Mode, where you can learn various techniques for GGST and thank you GeoGiost for following. Have a roll of my wheel. <laughs> you pulled a donut, congratulations. We aim to show new players that it is possible to enjoy fighting games without knowing about the battle mechanics by opting not to include explanations of the mechanics in the tutorial mode by reworking the matching system? Oh, 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 I got dizzy reading that one. What the hell? We aim to show new players that it is possible to enjoy fighting games without knowing the battle mechanics. That's a big meta play. That's a big meta play right there. Thank you, Arxis, for showing us how it's done. They're not wrong. I'm going to be real. I can understand that. They don't want to scare players away, new players away, right? I think... Arxis has been doing this for a long time. They really pride themselves on building like the meta game around skill development. I mean, that's kind of like what Exert is. That's kind of what. <laughs> yeah, they're making. They are definitely making a bad tutorial on purpose. Yeah, because it's all relative, right? If you don't care so much about skill and like improvement, 
right? If they want everyone to like figure shit out on their own, come up with tech on their own, right? Then, yeah, that makes sense. It's not actually like, cause I don't know, I'm really good at finding tech. So it's not like, for me, it's like a lot of fun to have just nothing out there, right? And I can get it all myself, but, but I don't know. I forget what the point I was trying to make was. It's like, I think it's okay, you know? I think it's fine. If you just don't want anyone to know jack shit about your game, let's see. However, we would recommend players who want to improve and get stronger to play mission mode. There are over 120 missions total between explanations of mechanics, techniques, combos, and counter strategies for individual characters. The joy of discovery. I'm gonna say most people who are playing GG aren't veterans in the beta. People might call themselves veterans, they're not veterans. It's like, <laughs> it's like all relative. I can think of a lot of players of like intermediate skill level who won't know what the fuck they're doing in Strive. My secret superpower, my special superpower is that I pick up new games very quickly. I've played a lot of different fighting games in like, in tournaments. Um, I used to be like the multi-game guy until I started to really focus on Guilty Gear. Like one of the reasons why I can write the wiki right now without the game being out and offer like decent insight into like the moves like point out information people would want to see want to know is that i know what to look for right i know i know exactly where all the option selects are going to be all i need is like a hint of frame data and i can usually like suss out option selects or setups or whether or not something works or doesn't work and i kind of know where not to overextend Right? Like, say, yo, you could probably definitely do this. I'm going to write in the wiki. Ha 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 ha. And then it turns out on launch, it's just like, not true. Stuff like that. I'm good at, like, sifting through new, new stuff. The missions are divided by difficulty level, so there's no need to try clearing all of them at once. This mode is great for when you feel like you've run into a wall during your matches, or when you don't know what to do to practice next. Don't know what to practice next. Next, we would like to respond to the feedback we received after open beta test number two. Improvements to the online lobby. We changed the matching system for online matches to using dual stations and added a rematch feature. This greatly improved the tempo of matchmaking, but there are still issues such as connectivity errors. We are making final fixes for these leading up to release. We are putting all of our effort into providing the best possible online environment by the release date. As major changes to the system could not be implemented in time, we are currently focusing on bug fixing, fixing bugs, improvements to the features, and other changes will be made after release in the form of free updates. So that's good. Major changes. I sa it says as major changes to the system could not be implemented in time. I like that. I like the sound of that quite a bit. Anyways, so that's good. Th this is like, this is what I wanted to see from them. Um, especially when they're saying like, we are looking at major changes. That means, that makes me a little hopeful that they could, not only are they looking at stability, but they're looking at potentially like overhauls of their system. Maybe, maybe they'll switch like how they handle connections. One of the um, things I, I've talked about before, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with this, so I'll go over it. I don't like their dual station system. I say this from like a design standpoint or like a net play experience standpoint. What was the one thing we all noticed about the servers trying to play on them, right? Just like walking around the lobbies. They were laggy, right? They were very laggy. It was, you know, people were teleporting around, you would move. You're not sure where the screen says they are, right? Because of the lag. You would like, you hop on a station and a dude who's a little laggy hops on the station next to you. He didn't see you hopping onto the station in time to like stop himself from hopping onto the station. And now you've both hopped onto adjacent stations and you want to play each other. One guy hops off, but because of the lag, it's kind of chunky, right? And so it looks like he's just hanging out there on the station on the other guy's client. So the other guy jumps off. He's like, I'll go to that guy's station. Then you both move station and you hop on each other's station. And then it corrects and you're on, <laughs> you've switched stations. You just played like musical chairs with the dual stations, right? And so you're like, oh, okay, well, I'll wait. And he'll wait. And then you both like, okay, maybe he's waiting, so I'll hop off. And you both hop off at the same time, because he fucked up. 
right? This little game of musical chairs where it's like, oh, um, no you, no you, I'll, I'll get off, I'll come to you. No, I'll come to you, I'll come to you. Oh, oh, sorry, well, I'll hop on this one then. Oh, but I'll, I'll hop on this one then, I understand. Oh, shit, well, I'll get off and I'll go fight him. Shredding Pixels, thanks for the follow, have a spin of the wheel. <laughs> Fat Chibi Faust, congrats. It's this, um... The server requiring you to be in a valid state to receive challenges at a particular point on screen is the problem, right? You have to confirm that you're open for challenges and you're in your position on said station. That's an issue. In my world, if I was doing a system, what I would do is have players able to freely target other players in the lobby via like a, like a, like a little lock-on reticle, right? And cycle, if you're too close to too many people, you just cycle through them with like R1 or L1. And then you just like send a challenge, right? You just go boop, or triangle, and you just send it. And maybe you send it to like a couple people. You're like, oh, I've gotta, I wanna fight you, and I wanna fight you, and I wanna fight you. And on the other end, players can receive challenges in real time from the server. And you just get a little list that pops up in the corner of the screen. And on L2 and R2, you can cycle through those. You're like, oh, I got a challenge from, you know, Tengu Lord 69 and um, Super Cow is over here. And oh, there's little Bussy Man. And I press square to like pick the one I want to fight. And once the player receiving confirms, then you initiate matchmaking in the background. And you just like, you, you load that stuff up in the background. You don't actually like interrupt the person's lobby experience. You don't show them any loading screens or anything like that. You just like, Oh, like that person accepted the challenge? Okay, try to match make. If you do have a valid connection, then you pop up with the little notice that says, you've been challenged or your challenge has been accepted. And you show the little warnings, uh, wanted posters with the bounties and stuff. And that way your, your valid challenge state isn't, isn't tied to like the server. Right, you're you're not like your animation of like having to stand there isn't tied to the server. You're, you're, the server's not like making you stand there to challenge someone. Right, there's no like coordination that has to be done or syncing between like your the opponent you want to fight on the other side of the server on on their home console and your console. Right, there's no like validation needed. Right, even if you like say you target a guy, you go to send a challenge to him. It doesn't matter if he teleported to the other side of the stage and it took like five seconds for that information to get to you through the server. The targeting radical doesn't care, right? It's just a local, it's just a local client little interaction, right? It, it has nothing to do with the server. You're just like, yeah, this guy's in the server. I want to fight him. Send a message. And then the server takes care of the rest and you're not stuck to a station. And no one is in a, no one has to validate that they're in a valid challenge state at all. And so that takes a huge little uh, roadblock out of the equation. So this would be very fast. Maybe they can't do concurrent connection attempts, right? So say you send a bunch of challenges to people, maybe they don't have like the means to do stuff like that, but I, I would be surprised if they couldn't do something like that. So I think they just had the wrong idea, right? They're like, okay, we don't want people getting challenged unnecessarily. We don't want people getting challenged if they don't want to be challenged. We don't want their experience ruined by trolls, hitting them, spamming them with um, connection attempts. But, I mean, if you did it this way that I just said, that wouldn't be a problem anyways, because it would just be a little menu that pops up on the bottom and that you can cycle through. No one can spam that. Oh, like, oh, I got one little box in the window of some dude trying to challenge me. Not a big deal. So I, I wish that's what they went for. And I hope that maybe they ditch this dual or this like dual station system. They ditch this like, I must be in a valid challenge state system. And they just let people send challenges, like, like fire them off and just let people filter through them on their own, right? Once they receive them, maybe you have like an auto accept toggle that you can have, right? Some, if you really want to like set and forget and let someone, you know, that was my rant. That was my rant. Felt good. Felt good to get that out. Adjustment to battle balance. As jumping was extremely strong during the first open beta test, we mainly adjusted arrow options for this test. It was our first time attempting to implement such extreme balance changes, such as decreasing the movement arcs of jumps and adding landing recovery before release. 
We were able to get extremely useful data thanks to this paired with that from the first test. After considering a variety of factors such as the game concept, battle balance, and how fun it is to play as an action game, we are making final adjustments in the direction of increasing movement arcs while retaining the landing recovery on aerial attacks and double jumps for the final game. Interesting. This is... this is fine. This is okay. I have no input because I play Faust. Faust has whack air movement to begin with, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. T-Spin, did you get your roll already? I can't remember. <laughs> poison. You're poisoned? Yeah, yeah, I went over the, um... Well, I went over on my own in private, the Dogra stuff. What a lord. What a lord. He just hasn't been the same since he got run over by that truck. We are also working on adjustments for other game elements, such as tension gauge increase for different situations. Nice. I like that. Increased number of plus frames on some counter hits. Very nice. Very good. I appreciate that. The cancel window for Gatling combos. Could be very interesting for Faust. Faust is kind of strict Gatling combos right now. Like, I would like to have a little more delay to, like, uh, call stuff out. Minor changes to the combo rules and individual balance changes for all characters. Please look forward to the release date to experience the finished game. That seems good. I like all of this. This is all great to me. This is like all stuff I want to hear about, all stuff I want them to be focusing on. Um, this is just all really, really, really good. Um, I love that they're doing more fun things with tension gauge. That's fantastic. Um, I like that that's where their mind is at. Um, meter management for me in Guilty Gear is a ton of fun. I love meter management. I fucking love it. It's so much fun to like jockey for meter because the meter is disgusting. And Guilty Gear often gives you a lot of fun ways to build meter. Now they didn't touch on instant blocking, but that, that'll just be a Sweat Lord mechanic. That's just how it goes. <laughs> Luckily I'm the sweatiest around. Non-stop sweat. Three-frame window for instant block. Enjoy! I hope you love to sweat, bro! <laughs> uh, oh. So, the thing about instant block, you're gonna want to go for it, I think? I think? You're gonna want to go for it, but you're not gonna want to... Yeah. Well, the thing is, they don't want the IB to be too good. Because that'll cause problems. Because they also have that IB FD mechanic, which I think is good very strong so i think there there's a lot of like weird option selects that can develop um let me give you an example say the ib window was eight frames like the old game right uh so on wake up with a fixed timing you could pretty much consistently ib all meaties right it's pretty easy to do and even, not just IB meaties, but moves that aren't quite meaty, right? Moves that are like, <clears throat> hit on frame 7 after wake up, right? 8 after wake up. You could IB them all with the same IB timing. Because you get an 8 frame buffer for IB, right? And Strive has about 5 frames of throw in vuln on wake up, thereabouts. So you could down back with IB on wake up. You'll IB all meaties. And then on frame five of wake up, after wake up, you up back. So you do down back on wake up and you FD at the same time to get IBFD, right? If they touch you and you push them away, far away if they touch you. And then you also up back the last moment and you fuzzy jump. So you do down back, IB, FD, get the, the super cool pushback mechanic. And then you jump just as your throwing bone runs out. How the fuck are people supposed to punish that reliably, right? It's like, yeah. And the limited options means they're more scared of IB just becoming way too good. But you could essentially make like a, a defensive option select that is really hard to meaty. Like you can't meaty. And people will have to try to like snipe your pre-jump, which is like a four frame window free. And if they miss, they lose pressure completely, right? So there's some like big brain defensive stuff you could do with a large, large IB window, and it would make certain characters dog shit, like just terrible. So, yeah, be careful what you wish for when you want stuff like that, because high level players would take full advantage of that, and you would be like, I can't do anything on wake up. I always get pushed out, and I can't throw them. 
and I like can never hit them because you'd be like aiming at like this really arbitrary like four frame window and if you missed pressure's done your pressure is gone that's like no fun right so it's important to have like a smaller defensive window for this the timing window so that people can't just bust it out at like a like easily you know consistently because it also like allows you to cover it's not just that it's easy to do it's that it covers such a wide window and you can play with that window high level players will play with that window it's not just about ease of use it's like oh if i i be here but then halfway through the ip window i fuzzy jump then it's like oh it would suck it would it would suck so hard trust me so it it's kind of sucks that this kind of stuff happens like like it's it sucks that we can't have a larger window but we can't have a larger window not until they do some like aggressive mechanic wrangling all right let let me put it that way they'd have to like do something to deal with all the resulting option selects that would crop up from a large ib window so and characters don't really have the tools right now to deal with that future volumes of developers backyard that's all for this volume of developers backyard we are planning on continuing this project after the game's release as a result of our busy schedules we feel recent developers backyard volumes have been a little one-sided we were able to share our developmental intent and our future plans but we're hoping to put more of an emphasis on creating a dialogue between us and the players moving forward. We would truly appreciate it if you would continue to send your opinions and feedback after the game is released. That's all for Volume 6 of Developer's Backyard. Thank you for reading to the end. There's about a week left until the release at last. Just before the release date, we have a Guilty Gear Strive Early Access Showcase planned on June 6th. In addition to new footage related to the story, we will also announce the future update schedule. Don't miss it. We're currently accepting submissions for topics you'd like us to discuss in a future developer's backyard, as well as questions and comments via the form below. Please note that we cannot answer inquiries regarding playable characters that have yet to be announced. Also, please be aware that we cannot answer every submission Check out the official GGST Twitter for the latest info. HTTPS slash slash twitter.com slash guilty gear Puerto Rico. For English tweets, follow Arc System Works U. Yo, I took Tuesday to Friday off. I took four days off to play Strive. <laughs> Could be a mistake. <laughs> Could be a, a big mistake, but it'll be good. I'm gonna have a good, good six days off, four days and a weekend. Anyways, that went well. That went well, I think. So that was cool. Uh, maybe I'll upload this to YouTube. My take, um, especially that net play thing, that that lobby system, I think is the most important thing they could fix. Um. Ah, shit. People have it already? Fuck me. We don't really have a lot of, like, retail outlets left over here in Canada. People are closing up. We have, like, EB Games, and they're never breaking street date. Uh... Nah. Whatever. I'll just play it in my mind. I'm psychic, you know? <laughs> 